when my son Vitold was two years old, he had a fever and we went to pediatrician. She was a great person. We fully trusted her. She helped us many times. Uh, she was the primary doctor of my son since his birth. So we entered the room and she examined him and she said to me, I could prescribe him medicine A, but you know, both of my grandchildren, twins, they didn't respond to this medicine well uh, and they have some stomach problems, they throw up, so I would rather prescribe him medicine B. So, so she did. I work in bioethics. I'm very familiar with the evidence-based medicine approach. Before you decide whether medicine A or B are more efficient, you need to perform clinical trials and obtain high-quality data. But our pediatrician just referred to something which is called anecdotal evidence, one-time event with, with, with her grandchildren. I didn't like that. So we went back home and I decided to consult another doctor. Dr. Google. I searched the internet and I found patient information leaflets. And then came another surprise. I couldn't find any data about both medicines for usage for pediatric populations. There were never ever any clinical trials performed with children with these two medicines. So our pediatrician didn't do anything wrong, she just didn't have any other option. The lack of adequate number of clinical trials with pediatric population exposes our children for medicines which are not necessarily effective and are potentially even harmful to them. About 65% of medicines prescribed daily to children have never been tested on pediatric populations. Physicians prescribe them because they don't have any other option. Clinical trial is a research when you're testing medicine, trying to, to test safety and effic efficacy of substance, and only 10% of these substances are eventually registered as drugs, as medicines. And then they can be tested only for this particular condition in which they were tested in a trial. All other usage of this medicine is called off-label. I'm sure that you experience this either as a child or as a parent. The physician is calculating dosage of, dosage of medicine to adapt it to your child's weight. In many cases, it means that the medicine will be prescribed of label. In 1960s, many parents dis discovered that children have stains in, in uh, newly formatted permanent teeth. These stains were caused by off-label use of tetracyclines, a type of antibiotics. So entire, uh, entire generation has these stains because of off-label usage. Why there is no more clinical trials with children then? Well, they are way more complicated than with adults. If I'm talking about uh, Pediatric diseases you probably have in mind, uh, I don't know, common cold, flu, or some other, other mild conditions. But now I would like to talk more about some, some heavy stuff, about life-threatening diseases in pediatric, particularly cancer, which is area of my research. Most of these pediatric life-threatening diseases are rare diseases and it's very hard to find sufficient number of participants for clinical trials. Also, the market for pharma companies is not so lucrative in case of rare diseases. Let me give you an example of Kim. Kim was six years old and she was whistling in front of a mirror with her mother, and she, she couldn't do that, she has some problems with, with whistling. Uh, it occurred that it was caused by a solid tumor, ribodymosarcoma, uh, who paralyzed one of, one of her facial nerves. She started treatment, uh, a mixture of surgery, chemotherapy and radiation, and uh, she now belongs to 
60% group of ribodyma sarcoma survivors. She lives in Virginia, 19 years free from cancer already. 60% survival rate in cancer is not bad, but we definitely can do better. But how to attract companies to invest in clinical trials with rare diseases or ribodyma sarcoma, with about 300 patients annually in, in, in the United States? Well, there are some legal initiatives which works pretty well, but working in ethics, I also do believe that we should, we should build a new, more realistic ethical framework. First, we should get rid of two not optimal elements of ethical framework. Minimal or low risk requirement and direct benefit requirement for participation in early clinical trials in pediatrics. My team, together with Jonathan Kimmelman, Maugojata Bawa and many other great researchers, perform meta-analyses for all clinical trials in pediatric phase one oncology published in 11 years. We wanted to calculate risk and benefit for participation in these trials. And we found that risk of participation is quite high because on average, every participant experienced at least one serious or life-threatening drug-related adverse event. Okay? 2% of these children die because adverse events of participation is in these trials. So risk of participation in early clinical trials in pediatric oncology is high, is definitely not, not low. What should we do? Should we stop all these trials now? The answer is obviously no, because this would deprive entire pediatric population of an access of uh, safe drugs in, for cancer. I think that we should build new ethics framework for clinical trials in pediatric oncology. Let's stop to pretend that participation in early clinical trials for some life-threatening diseases of the pediatric cancer is likely to be beneficial for these children. Let's build a new ethical framework which would allow to perform these trials even if the risk is elevated, but the possibility of social benefit is higher. Let's maximize participation of decision-making by children, because children in oncology and with life-threatening diseases indicates the possibility of decide quite fast. Anya lives in Poznan, she's two, and she's one of these children with a serious condition. Hospitals, treatments, medicines are an intrinsic part of her, of her life. Being two and barely speaking, she's able to remind her parents about a portion of her medicine every day. This is one of these examples that children with chronic condition I indicates decisional capacity surprisingly quickly. Let's use that. Yes, let's, let's involve them in the decision-making process. The second, we should also improve social benefit for participation in the trials. There is many reasons, many options how to do that. Let's prioritize more socially beneficial trials. Let's, pu let's publish all also negative results for these trials. So I think that we should be more honest. We should stop to pretending that participation in these trials is more beneficial. The lack of adequate number of clinical trials with pediatric population exposes our children for medicines which are not necessarily effective and are potentially even harmful to them. Thank you.